Well, first of all, what is the mod team? Well, to know that, you must know what a mod is. And for the general purpose of this talk and for the benefit of everyone else, well, a mod is just short for modification. Well, it's exactly that, a modification of, well, code uh, of PHPBB. Now, why, why would you want to edit code? Well, not all the features that you want are included in PHPBB, so you end up adding modifications or creating modifications for your installation. And that is what a modification is. Now, what do we do? Well, we check the validity of code as it is submitted to the, the customizations database. We make sure that it is clean, secure, and that it functions. And then that way is redistributed to whoever would need this modification. Uh, it, and modification could be something small. It could be something really complex, like say, PHPBB gallery, or um, user blog mod. And those sorts of uh, monster mods uh, are also in existence. Now, the rest of this presentation uh, will concentrate on how the team operates, uh, what tools are available, and what everyone else can do to get involved, uh, including our community and other fellow team members. So with that, we head on to the validation process, and that will be headed by Paul and Dirk. Well, we have made the uh, following steps to uh, describe the validation process. We will start with the uh, preparations. Uh, before you submit your mod, we uh, would like to give some pr preparation tips so that you don't uh, get it denied al already. And the first one is follow the guiding lines. These are located in each docs folder. So or if you download PHP 3, they're in the docs folder so you can read them. Uh, it takes some time to read them all, but uh, if you know them, you can prevent a lot of bugs, and they're quite handy. Uh, following is test the mod. Well, yourself, it seems uh, quite logical, but uh, especially when you make small updates, a lot of people do not test it. They think, well, just uh, it's uh, just a small uh, update. I don't need to test it, or you just forget about it. And of course, with the first submissions. And you could also ask the community by uh, posting a topic in the development forum so that other people will test your mod and give feedback on it. And then you can uh, also prepare better for the validation. Well, um, if you have submitted your mod to the mod database, we uh, run a pre validation script. This is uh, the mod pre-validator, MPV, and automod. And mod pre-validator will um, check for common errors, also security uh, issues, and they will uh, note it and add a warning or fail. And then you can check if these are valid and fix them. And automated mod installation installs your mod by using the install.xml file and it will just return OK or fail. <coughs> OK, um, then we, if uh, it all passes nicely, we go to the code validation where we look at the whole code, uh, line by line. First of all, we check if the, the install.xml uh, fits if the mod fits the description, so it's actually doing what it's supposed to do. And if the license is uh, OK, so it's compatible with GPL. Um, oh, we also check for the coding guidelines, of course, like naming VARs and using the default PHP functions like request var and that stuff. We also check for security issues like uh, SQL injections, XSS, and all that stuff to make sure uh, you don't create a security hole in your form by installing that mod. And we also make sure to, uh, it suits all policies, like packaging the mod, and the licenses and language files, like you put the language files in the mods folder, in the language folder. And Paul will now uh, continue with the suggestions. Uh, besides uh, a few requirements, we also uh, 
give, in most cases, a few suggestions to uh, how we, uh, users can optimize the code. Uh, we see in a lot of K mods uh, that users use queries in loops and that kind of things. In most cases, these kinds of queries can be re rewritten to uh, fit just one query. And uh, these are not a requirement for uh, getting the mod approved, but we are giving uh, suggestions to make sure the mod works on all kinds of boards, so not only on the, the smaller boards, but also on the uh, larger boards. Uh, and also we check for uh, proper English spelling. Um, not everyone is as good as native speakers in English. And uh, we check for it and make sure uh, it passes a basic uh, level of English. Um, after a mod is uh, validated by a uh, mod team validator, uh, it's tested by a junior validator. In 2008, we decided we wanted to uh, have less work for our mod, so we uh, made a new sub-team of the mod team, the junior validator team, uh, so, they are, uh, so they can test the mods. Uh, these are not, not full team members, they only have access to uh, certain pieces of the queue, and their task is to uh, test the mod. Uh, they do. They install the mod with uh, Automod. Um, when they do this, they check if there are any errors in the Automod installation, and if the description and uh, futures that are set in the future description in the installation uh, matches the uh, actual mod. They also check for uh, conflicts with other mods in that can be or that exits. Uh, you have uh, certain mods that uh, modify certain pieces of code and they make sure there aren't any common conflicts with other mods. Uh, again, they check also for proper English spelling because they see the uh, user interface with uh, interaction with the English language, so it's easier to check if there are any common mistakes. So, and they also check in combination with the English spelling the user interface as well. Uh, when uh, the validation is done and also the uh, uh, the testing is done, we have a few options we can do. Uh, we can repack the mod if there's a common mistake. Uh, we can approve it, we can deny it. Uh, if it's not passing MPV, we can also insta-deny it. Uh, you see that some people are already laughing. We have here <coughs> a small uh, picture of a um, uh, picture made by Derki when he was it on the team. Uh, sometimes we just click the random button when we are uh, we like to do a random action. We're using a trademark to the one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, uh, this was uh, when Derky made this picture, we actually added a random button to the real uh, mod database at that moment. So uh, it did actually work as well. So sometimes you just press a random button and uh, have a random action doing for the mod. So um, when we, we repack for uh, mods only when it is a small issue and only if the author approves the, uh, the repack as well. So if there is a small XHTML error or a small uh, language error, we repack the mod. Uh, if it's any uh, larger error, we don't repack it at all, we just deny it. Um, we approve it, uh, all we, or we approve it if it passes code validation and uh, testing. Uh, we give, if there are any suggestions, we don't deny it, we just approve it. And we give that suggestions to uh, the user. That can be a something small, but it can also be larger, but not enough to deny it. Uh, we deny it only if there is uh, something large enough to deny it. So anything uh, larger than something small is uh, deny worthy. Uh, Insta deny is uh, only meant for in the twen first 24 hours after uh, a mod is submitted, and uh, only if there is or if there is a uh, warning or fail at uh, MPV. Not all warnings or fails at MPV are actually uh, den Insta deny worthy. So uh, that's a case by case decision by a mod team member. Uh, the advantages of uh, submitting a mod to the mod database. Um, there are a few advantages of submitting the mod to the database. Uh, you get a free security audit by the mod team. We check all mods uh, for line by line code validation to make sure there aren't any security issues at all in the mod. Um, I, this is pretty unique, I think. Um, not, other, not much other uh, forums do uh, this kind of things. Uh, we uh, are hosting the uh, mod downloads, uh, screenshots, fact, and support forums for you. 
uh, so you don't need to host this yourself. Um, you can still do it, but we are doing it for you. So there's one central place for support and downloads. And you get a great exposure to the community. community. Uh, the mod database is known as a, a good quality of sources for mods. So if your mod is in the mod database, you will get a great exposure to the mod itself. Uh, Sam Thompson and Igor Wheeler will now continue with the mod team tools. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Hi. Um, my name is Sam Thompson. This is Igor Wheeler. Also known as Evil Less Than Three. <laughs> right, so, uh, mod team tools. So the uh, so uh, essentially uh, before validation, you know, you can actually submit your mod. You have to package it. Monix is this packaging format where it is an XML. It's an XML-based packaging format where you actually create a mod that is a sorry. <laughs> he he wrote this. <laughs> Well, the, uh, the the idea of the of the modx file is actually it, it contains all the code edits. So you have an XML that has a uh, that has finds, edits, inserts, deletions, and such. It uses a XSD scheme of validation and an XSL style sheet. It's a pain to write by hand, and we'll go into the various generators and creators that we offer. Uh, additionally, uh, we have modx 2.0 on the way. So uh, first, uh, first one I believe that we created was a Modex Studio by Smitty DLL. That was written in C sharp. Yeah, that's not maintained anymore. Not maintained anymore? No. Oh. That's just history. <laughs> that's history. Oh, okay. This this is ancient history then. I've I've never used the uh, the Modex Studio. It's not compatible with the current version of Modex. You want to no. talk about it? Yeah, I want to talk about this, not the ancient history. <laughs> Then uh, next was the uh, the mod X by uh, APTX, who's sitting in our uh, oh there he is back there he's raising his hand oh, there. Uh, that was written in uh, C plus plus and I believe that was made cross platform. Yeah, and uh, that that works on Linux. I've used that and that's kind of neat. Next, uh, Tumba twenty five or Jari created the uh, the web based creator and this is actually this is really nice because you can just go in and copy paste all your edits and then you hit the, the download button and it packages it all for you. And uh, essentially, it's just a GUI for creating mods, and uh, you know, because it's it's XML, it's it's something that's created for machines by machines, and should be only read by machines. Humans should not have to read it at all. It well, yeah, but why would you want to read XML? I mean, if you have that much spare time, then go ahead. <laughs> but uh, I'd I'd rather have a uh, a generator do it. <laughs> and so uh, what's what's really neat? What I, what I personally love doing is using these generators because. Uh, so uh, essentially the idea behind a generator is it generates a, a mod from a diff. And uh, you, you, what, what you do is you take a, a, a clean version of PHPBB and you compare it against your modified version and it will create the, the diffs. And so uh, there's a modx changes generator by Acid Burn or Mike, who's sitting in the back. <laughs> uh, mod underscore diff by evil less than three. And then uh, a token-based version by Naderman, also known as PIF. <laughs> and then uh, Jari most recently came up with the ModX generator, which uh, I've used personally, and I, I love it. I use it for all my mods. It's a, uh, what it does is it's, it, it's a CLI PHP application where you, uh, you essentially specify a clean PHP v install and your modded version. And simply what you do is you just is you uh, send a simple command into the PHP command line, uh, whether that be through command prompt or through bash, and it will essentially just create a uh, it, it will it will create your mod, and it supports inline inline edits and uh, dynamic context. <laughs> 